So today's job is fuel injectors in a Mark V GTI. So we have some new fuel injectors. These ones are recon, um, reconditioned by Artec Performance. Um, if you're watching these videos, you probably know who Artec are. Symptoms of a fuel injector is mainly poor idle. Um, mine's on 201,000 miles at the moment. Um, poor idle really. So once it's warmed up, um, with the aircon, like the um, air conditioning left on, I've got a bit of a lumpy idle. Um, turn it off, turn the aircon off. That is, and it, it worsens. Um, what you won't have is a fault code. So if you've got rough idle, no fault code, fault code stored, no misfires stored. Um, and your Lamba reading is doing this. Then highly likely you've got a fuel injector problem. So the reason it's going plus and minus 5% is the engine's running lean. So it's not getting fuel through because of pressure. The idle isn't letting enough fuel through for an idle situation. So as that air mixture gets down to the Lamba sensor, it picks up, it's lean. So the issue puts a bit more fuel in. That mixture gets down to the lamp centre. And this is why now we're running rich because too much fuel. Cycle, cycle, cycle. So that's what it is. So what we can do, um, pull the manifold off, um, get the injectors out and stick some new ones in. So there we go, we've got the inlet in manifold off. The most awkward part of this job is that it's the brace bar, um, which goes on the bottom of the inlet manifold. Once that's off, it just wriggles off. Um, obviously these stuff from carbon build-up, but mine just look more oily than anything. Um, again, it's not exactly sluggish in power, so maybe give them a wipe out. It's also had inlet manifold flaps removed. So if someone's been in here previously, because they would be fractured. Probably why I've got a noisy, rubbish, cold start. But hey ho, it has been remapped in the past as well. So um, yeah, let's get the inlet manifold in the garage. Um, only other things to unplug are the main loom plug plugs down here. Um, take all the loom with the injectors, and then you can just put it back on easy when you refit them. All right, so this is the manifold off. Um, this is your air flap valve. So the motor on there turns those flaps, which directs air. When it's cold really um, and they normally line up with something on the cylinder head but they're not in there which is fine so what we'll do we'll pull the injectors out side by side and fit the new ones in so as we know these stuff from carbon build up um, I mean yeah doesn't look pretty does it 
But am I going to waste my time cleaning it? No, not really. I've seen worse. The air still gets through. You can see the air path is going through it, the angle it goes in. I'm not worried about cleaning those. I'm going to say this is a 200,000 mile car. It performs really well. I mean, yeah, it flies along. Like I said, it's been mapped in the past, I know we buy, but it's not slow. I'm not going to. The effort of doing that is not going to gain anything for a daily car. If it was a performance car and you're out of power, yeah, fine, but I say it, this does good fuel miles per gallon, performs faultlessly, shifts along when you stick your boot down, so I'm not going to waste my time. If you want to, crack on. Right, so we've got all the new injectors in with all the correct parts on there. These obviously came from Artec, so the top of the injectors, pardon me. The old seals um, had some lubricant on them. Obviously, when you when you're putting them in, just put it in the hole, just gently wiggle it in. And when it goes to as far as it will go, just give it a little wiggle just to help that seal sit right. Now, obviously, these are new seals on the end. What you don't do is damage those, which would be quite hard because the way they fit. All I've got that's some fresh engine oil in there with some oil squirters. Um, little dab of oil in there. They're all tight on. All the plugs are on because that's awkward to get to in the car. And now we can get that back on the car. So note to self when installing the injectors, put them in the head first because they are very tight when they push down for the seal to go in. Put them in the head first, then put the manifold on. So as we know, we broke one of these breathers um, changing the car. These are flimsy, they're old. See, that's hardly any pressure on that. They're just brittle, it breaks. So, what can you do with that? Buy a new one, obviously, or get a Stanley blade. These are the ends you want. Obviously, it's a barbed end. One and two. These are obviously a more um, resistant material. So, get a Stanley blade. This is the end that's like heat shrunk on it. Slice a line, line through it. And just pull it off and then get yourself a bit of hose either this in the garage so I'll just use this again a bit of three core silicon pipe pop the ends on there jeeper clip or a spring clip or something you probably don't need any clip on there because quite a tight fit is only a breather but I'll clip it anyway just where it is and then uh, pop that back on the car so I'll get on with that and stick it on so there we are all done I've chosen to use cable on the end because as you can see where that goes in there you can see the bulge on the pipe how tight it is in there try and pull it out and it's quite tight so all I've done symbol cable tie around the end just to give it a bit more again it's a breather it's not gonna leak out of there so put that back on the car put the last plugs on it and then turn the ignition on and check we haven't got any fuel leaks anywhere so that's it engines all covers all back on now what I'm gonna do is uh, fire it up and um, check on the diagnosis and see if she runs better so as you can hear, maybe not, the jet's all back on, the engine's running up, idle straight away is so much better, it's not running like a bloody three cylinder lump. Um, one of the things is, we noticed in the videos, I, someone has removed the air flaps or air slots on the cylinder head side on the Mark V. Um, this does cause, if it's not been, you can remove them, but it needs to be calibrated or remapped correctly to take an account map because um, that's all to do with the airflow in all that sort of stuff so you can have a bit of a rough noisy um, idle if those are missing which I have got but I can hear it now it's, it's a million times better um, so we just leave it to run up there's no fuel leaks um, nothing's leaking everything's running fine so we're happy with that I've just scanned it there's no other fault codes coming up bar uh, the airflow meter fault code because that was still unplugged uh, before I put the rock um, airbox back on and turn the ignition on just to get the fuel pressure to build up um, just make sure no checks because when the cover's on you can't really see it obviously the math was unplugged um, so that was the only fault code cleared that no fault codes coming up um, which is good on the engine so like I said we'll leave it to run up working temperature um, and then we'll double check on the diagnostics um, what the Lambda's doing but already now I can hear it's a hundred times better so catch you back in a minute so there we go as you can see from these two pictures. The Lamba range has gone from 
what was it, minus, plus or minus five or six percent to 0, 0.0 and minus 0 0.8, which is, yeah, banging, that's perfect. I can hear the idles better, just listen to the car. Your normal tapping, us, even if I turn the aircon off, the revs drop a bit, still an even idle. So, there we go, that's changing your injectors. Um, pretty simple to do. Like I say, get the inlet manifold off. There's only that one awkward bolt, which is a nightmare. You could take the throttle body off, but when I'm trying to do things, I try to limit the amount of things I'm taking apart. The minimise the amount you take apart, the less can go wrong and the easier it is to put back together. Um, so there we go, yeah. Cheers for watching. Any questions, stick them in the comments.